welcome back. Uh, um, so every year we try to have a member of the OTB team come in and give an update. And uh, this year, uh, you know, o OTP code and Erlang are the background behind all of the languages that we're using. So the things that they do affect all of us. So I'd like to welcome Ingela. I think I said your name correctly. I'm trying uh, to to give us an update from the OTP team. Thanks. Yeah, OK. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think you got it fairly right. It's Ingela. Uh, yeah, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with you from uh, Stockholm, Sweden, uh, to give you some news from the Erlang OTP team at Ericsson. Uh, and uh, I will start uh, uh, with some news about OTP 27 that was released uh, in May last year, and then we will go on to OTP 28 that will be released in May this year. Um, but so one of the biggest or most uh, visible things that we did in OTP 27 uh, was process labels. So process labels are short descriptions that doesn't have to be unique that you can associate with your processes. Uh, so if we take an example, we can look at some process listings here. And at the top, uh, we have the OTP 26 process listing in our um, observer application. Uh, and you can see that we have a TLS sender process. Uh, that much we can deduce from looking at the function name that is initially called when the process is started. But we really don't know much uh, about what this process is doing, if it's a client or if it's a server, um, or what it's connecting to, or if it has uh, some user process, uh, and what kind of process that is. Um, but if we take a look at the bottom, uh, in OTP 27, when we have used the process labels, we can now see that the TLS sender is a client and it's connected to www.erlang.org. And also we can see it has a user process that's implementing HTTPS and not LDAP, for instance. Uh, so we are increasing the observability of our system uh, in a really nice way. And these labels will show up in crash reports and in Erlang crash dumps too. And of course, uh, you can have your own process labels that you associate with your own processes uh, to increase the observability even more. When it comes to the documentation, uh, we ditched our uh, old documentation format that was XML uh, and we replaced it uh, with, um, with Markdown. And as you can see, we now have a much nicer look and feel or, and, or, and more modern uh, such. Uh, of our documentation. And also we have um, uh, restructured a lot of the content and enhanced it in other ways. But the intent is also that it should be easier to contribute to our documentation. So if you feel that um, it needs improving somewhere, uh, uh, you're welcome to make a pull request. And here's a small example of how API documentation could look like uh, with our newly uh, supported uh, triple quoted strings to make it easy to write multi-line comments in the code. We also introduced some new uh, sigils um, to facilitate uh, writing um, documentation strings. Uh, so you see example one and two here. Um, we have um, binaries that are UTF-8 encoded is the default. Uh, and we also have example three and four uh, to show you that you can have the output as a list of characters or a binary, and you don't have to use two verbose escaping. And if you want to know more details about these sigils, uh, please have a look at our user guide. And the most popular open source contribution to OTP 27 was uh, the JSON encoding decoding module uh, that was contributed by Mihao at WhatsApp. 
so thank you very much, Mihao, for that contribution. And if you want to know more of the details of the OTP27 release, uh, you can have a look at our blog. So let's move on to OTP28. Uh, in OTP28, we're going to have something called nominal types. And these are types that are um, distinguished by user-defined names. Uh, so, for instance, we could define uh, the nominal types meter and foot, and they would both be compatible with the built-in type integer, but not compatible with each other. So, if we, in our program, mix up meters and foots, Dialyzer is going to complain, which is a very good thing, because if we mix up meters and foots, we are going to get uh, very strange results uh, that might uh, have disastrous consequences. We are also introducing something called SIP comprehensions. Uh, and uh, SIP comprehensions um, was proposed a very long time ago, actually, uh, like a decade ago or something or more in EEP 19. Uh, but since then, a lot of things happened to Erlang, uh, so we had to write a new EEP. Uh, but the um, SIP comprehensions is, is uh, the same uh, suggestion in, in general. Uh, but so what is a SIP comprehension? And I, I would uh, want to explain it by just first saying or telling you what the list comprehension is. So. A list comprehension uh, is a way to generate lists uh, from a couple of generators. And uh, then you take all the elements of the generators and you combine them in all possible ways. And then you get the Cartesian product. Uh, but if you have a SIP comprehension instead, and you take uh, the elements from each generator and you SIP them together uh, so that you get a smaller result set. And we also introduced something called strict generators. So for normal uh, list comprehensions, uh, if you have an element in the generator that doesn't match um, the match expression of the comprehension, it will just be filtered out. Uh, but if you use a strict generator, uh, you will now get a runtime error. Uh, security is also, of course, something that we are always considering. And uh, we are following closely the Cyber Resilience Act that the European Union, Union is uh, working on. And uh, the US, of course, is uh, working on similar things. Uh, and one of the things that we already have done because of this is that we have adopted private issues on GitHub. So if you think that you have found a vulnerability in our code base, you can tell us about it without telling the rest of the world. And then, of course, uh, when we have a CV for it and the solution, uh, it will be published uh, through our CNA, uh, which is uh, GitHub at the moment. But in the future, uh, probably the Alang Ecosystem Foundation will become our CNA uh, together with all the other Beam languages. So that's the plan, at least. Um, when it comes to the SLTLS application, we have concentrated our efforts on the inner mechanisms of the application, uh, doing refactors to improve, improve code health and to improve um, the data flow, uh, especially for TLS 1.3, but not exclusively. Uh, I can also mention two things in more detail. And one is that we avoid recreating, recreating the same term many times when we uh, uh, return uh, the OPEC TLS socket to the API functions. And we also uh, avoid some overhead uh, by introducing some new crypto functions so that we don't have to do general initializations over and over again. And this, of course, uh, improves our memory, ha memory handling and improves the garbage collecting. So we produce less garbage and uh, 
and we decrease the C CPU utilization this way, uh, improving the green footprint of our application. Uh, and when it comes to running Alang without the shell, we now have a new raw mode. And in this mode, uh, it's possible to read keystrokes without the user having to press enter, and it will not be echoed um, to stand it out. So now you will be able to write your own snake game, terminal snake game in Alang. And um, dynamic supervisors, uh, we have decided that their progress reports will be on the bug level. So if you have lots of TLS connections going up and down, you will no longer be spammed uh, by any progress reports. And we have a new API function for supervisors too, which is called which child. Uh, and this facilitates, um, facil facilitates you to find uh, the process IDs of your siblings under the same supervisor. Uh, floating points uh, can now be written in any base, and you have some examples of this here. Also, we have been working on introducing process iterators uh, so that you can inspect all your processes in a more scalable way. Uh, and we have uh, a new backend for the regex, regex module. Uh, that is now supported uh, because the backend that we had was out of support. And Emacs mode will be handled multi line strings better. And if you want to use the C standard or the Z standard, I'm not sure how you want that to be, to be pronounced, uh, but the, that's a compression standard anyway. And if you're interested in using that, we have an API module for that. And last but not least, uh, we have been introducing something called priority messages. Uh, and this is uh, so that you can uh, handle uh, heavy load situations uh, better, uh, but it's not something that uh, you will be using in your daily messages, uh, because then you are going to end up uh, in starvation or other things or, uh, issues that you didn't want. So it should be used with care. Uh, and uh, that was uh, the highlights of OTP 28. Thank you so much for listening. We have questions. Can you hear me? No? Okay, uh, so I was wondering about the strict generators, if that's uh, <laughs> enabled, like, okay. Just go stand behind the thing and talk to it. Can you hear me now? No, up here. Okay, this side. Can you hear me? Ingela, yeah, can, can you hear us? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So regarding <laughs> the strict generators, is that a global yeah. change or is it enabled by a feature? Uh, sorry, I, 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 it's very low. What Could you repeat that question? Yeah. So regarding the strict generators, is that a global change to all code or is it enabled by a feature, for example? Uh, no, it's not the global uh, change, so I can go back to here. Um, so you see uh, a normalist comprehension just has an arrow, and if you want to strict generator, you have to put a colon in the arrow. Okay, thanks. I couldn't see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's a new feature, and uh, you, you only get it if you want it. <laughs> So, so this could be useful if you are iterating over something where it's like uh, uh, you want everything to be in. You don't want to filter anything out, and it's an error if, if uh, you have a, uh, something that doesn't match. Anybody else? Yep. Francesco? 
you So, uh, yeah. Can you hear me, Angela? Yes, I can hi. hear you. So, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, sorry you couldn't make it in person, but yeah, you know, hopefully next year. Yeah. Um, Maybe. <laughs> I had a quick question. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of really, really good cooperation uh, with, um, with with the general community. So, you know, going beyond the airline community, but you know, the Elixir community. I know you've got regular calls with WhatsApp. Could you mm -hmm. maybe uh, dwell a little bit into the changes which have come in, not because Ericsson actually needs the features, but because you know, they've been maybe contributed by the community or encouraged uh, by others? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, the SIP generators is, uh, not, uh, is not something that was uh, from Ericsson. Uh, uh, it was from uh, the open source community, but as I said, a very long time ago, and uh, um, then uh, we didn't really um, uh, have the time or to, to, to actually implement it, even if we didn't think it was a bad idea, uh, until now. <laughs> so so uh, we wrote the second EEP, but... Uh, uh, but that was just uh, doing uh, things uh, to like uh, say, okay, how is this working with maps, for instance, that didn't exist when the first EEP was written. So it, the basic uh, functionality of SIP generators is the one uh, uh, that was uh, suggested in EEP 19 by open source community. Uh, And uh, surprisingly often, I think, uh, what Ericsson wants and what open source wants are, are the same things. <laughs> but open source uh, uh, community is uh, often more quick-footed, so uh, uh, Ericsson benefits, I think, from, uh, from that. Anybody else? Uh, Anybody? Nobody wants to get on stage? This is your chance. All right. <clears throat> well, Ingela, thank you very much for your time and for sharing with us. We appreciate having you, as always. Have yeah. a wonderful day. It, it was nice coming. I, I hope that uh, at, at least once I get to go to the US conference also. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, I, th I think uh, it's in the, since the pandemic, uh, it has been uh, like uh, harder uh, to to <laughs> to do all the traveling. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully. All right. Thank you. Give a round yep. of applause, everybody. <laughs>